All right, family, welcome back to I Love BBB. So it is now day 18 of Vlogmas 2017 in December. So stay tuned for the question of the day. Family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So if this is your very first time here to I Love Me, 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 this is Vlogmas. And so with Vlogmas, I decided to take on the challenge of vlogging every single day and vlogging for me is answering one question every single day with the exception of December 1st I answered five questions so if this is your very first time here there is a playlist in the description box below so you too can be caught up on all of the questions that I have already answered again there will be 31 at the end of December because there are 31 days in December I am answering a question every single day so now getting to it today's question of the day is how do I build trust in a new relationship I'm gonna try to run through these as quickly as possible um, I have 15 to give you so I don't want to spend too much time let's jump in the first way to build trust is to be a reliable person so you're being reliable, they can actually depend on you, and um, you're, you're doing what you're saying that you're going to do. You said that you're going to call this particular time, so you're going to call. You're saying that you're going to be there a certain amount of time. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, at a certain time frame, you're actually going to be there. So you're basically doing what you say that you are going to do. Number two, you are staying faithful to that person. And I know, again, I read that this is a new relationship. However, you don't want to break down the trust by being unfaithful, especially very new on. So stay faithful. Number three, a lot of us can take heed to this one. I've said it before, but number three is to make your relationship a priority. Make the relationship, make the person in it a priority. No excuses on why you can call back. No excuses on why you can answer your text. No excuses why they don't know that you are running late. Make it a priority and you will notice that this makes both of you happier to be in each other's company. It also decreases the stress levels, the unnecessary stress levels that we might have with dealing with someone new. Keep in communication, keep in contact. That way they know where you are at and you know where they are at and not necessarily physically i'm just meaning here where you at they know they can understand the fourth way to build trust in a new relationship is to say what you mean and mean what you say don't be that fickle person that says one thing but does something different you are not being that reliable person that i already mentioned uh you don't want to be the fickle person you want to say what you mean and mean what you say and actually stick to what you're saying don't be the wind that just blows, or let me say, that don't be the leaf on the tree that just blows with the wind. The fifth way to build trust in a new relationship or any relationship is really to just tell the truth. I know that I just did a video on why men uh, lie versus telling the truth, but really, you can just be truthful. If, if you can't be truthful with your partner, who can you be truthful with? You're probably not even being truthful with yourself. I digress. That's a different video. The sixth thing that you can do to build trust is to share your feelings with the other person. Open up emotionally. Let them know where you're at so you both can be on the same page. It, and not on the same page as in looking at things or being emotional at the same stage, but being on the same page as in you know where your partner is. Give me a second. All right, thanks for being patient with me and my baby. All right, the seventh reason is say no at time say no when you want to say no don't hold back or feel like you don't want to disappoint this new person because what you do in the beginning is is how you're going to actually have to keep up that relationship so say no at times because that's what you want to do you don't want to have to feel like you have to go along with somebody else's program if you don't want to go to the movies that time say no if you don't want to go to an outing that time say no but don't feel the pressure and it's usually the pressure the unnecessary pressure that we are putting on ourselves so say no at times it's okay it's okay yeah. the eighth one is big yeah you gotta trust your partner that's big trust is like the foundation or at least one of the foundational things um, in building a relationship period so you gotta trust your partner if you don't trust your partner you don't need to be there 
I'm not even going to take it any further on that. If you don't trust your partner, you don't need to be there. Think about it. Number nine is to have faith in your partner's capabilities. Anything that they can do or say that they can do, don't doubt the person. Just watch and see if they can do it. If they can do it, definitely give them praise. Even if they can't do it, you know what? That was a good try. I'm sorry I ran that all together. <laughs> you can basically let them know, you know what? Even if they did not do it, that was a good try. That was a good try. You can still give them some praise. It's not going to take anything away from you, but it's absolutely going to add into their self-esteem bucket. Add into their self-esteem bucket. That'll help out to build the trust in any relationship, but especially a new relationship. Number 10 is a big one, y'all. Don't be snooping. Don't snoop in their phone. Don't snoop in their email. Don't snoop even in their house. I actually have a story on that. Really quickly, I was dating this one guy a few years back, and um, I noticed that we would all, we would actually always be together. But this one particular time, he was like, you know what, I got to go back to um, the job to do something, even though I was coming over. And um, that was okay. It wasn't no big deal. But well, here, here's, here's where the story got a little tricky, and I feel like he was trying to test me to see if I would snoop in his place. So so long story short, his job was at least 20 minutes one way away from where he lived, at least one way. So I knew that I was going to be in this place. The, the, the shortest time was going to be 45 minutes. That was going to be shortest. Long story short, he just, he told me that he needed to like leave and do whatever he needed to do. And uh, <laughs> I just sat down on this couch. Okay, cool. Go do what you need to do. You know, I'll be here when you get back. So lo and behold, I called one of my girlfriends and she basically told me to snoop. And I was like, nah, it ain't even that type of party. Well, thank you, Jesus. I got my own mind because this is why I'm saying it was a test. Because not even 20 minutes later, dude come back through the door. Talking about he finished doing what he needed to do. And I just looked at him. Again, I told y'all about picking y'all battles. I was just like, right. You finished? Right. Now, I know your job is at least 20 minutes one way. So... But again, I'm thinking all of this. I told my friend, I said, girl, he just walked back through the door. And her and I, we just started laughing because literally our conversation was about me snooping. So I was like, no, girl, I'm sitting here on the couch. Like, what's up? Try to move the conversation on. And I'm glad I set my butt down on that couch because I'm like, I ain't got time for that. I, I don't have time to snoop. Again, if you don't trust your partner, you don't need to be there. The 11th one is for you not to keep secrets. For you and pretty much and your partner not to keep secrets from one another because that actually starts to break down the relationship or deteriorate deteriorate the relationship. It, there's no good from keeping secrets. There really isn't, especially if it is something that is detrimental to you and your partner's relationship. Now, I'm not talking about keeping secrets like your friend told you something like, girl, please don't tell your husband, please don't tell your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. I'm not talking about those secrets. I'm talking about secrets within within your own relationship that I can actually hurt you and your partner. Not nobody else's stuff. Your own stuff. Don't keep those secrets. You got to divulge that information. Whatever the information is, you have to divulge that information to your partner because that is the only way that your relationship is going to thrive and survive. That's it. Because once that thing that comes out, that secret, once it comes out, that can pretty much be the break of your entire relationship. It also is going to make your partner feel like everything else that you guys have worked for is built on a lie. You do not want that. All right, number 12. Don't stress when the boundaries of the relationship get tested because, Lord Jesus, the boundaries of the relationship is going to be tested because we are all human and we will do things just to see what our partner is going to do. Like, we all petty. <laughs> We all can be some petty betties at times, and sometimes I just want to annoy you. And sometimes you just want to annoy me. So don't worry about, you know, some people like super freak out when they have an argument. And they automatically think, well, are we going to break up this time? Like, pump your brakes. Like, skrr, it ain't that serious. And if it is that serious to you, that is something that you need to handle. That is some baggage that you need to handle because any argument doesn't mean that you're going to break up. It doesn't mean that the partner is going to walk away from you because you had one argument. Like, get your feelings out there and get your opinion out there. Your partner needs to know how you feel. So the boundaries of the relationship, they're going to be tested, boo. And you just got to be ready for it because they coming. 
Your entire relationship, they coming. The more mature that your relationship, like the stage that your relationship is in, the less the boundaries are tested. But especially in the beginning, oh, I got to see what you made of. And men, you guys have a tendency to do this a lot more than women. I'm not saying that, you know, you know, y'all know how I do. I'm not saying that women don't do this, but I am saying that men do this a lot more than women do. They trying to see what you made of, boo. You don't have to argue about everything. You know, you don't have to, you know, um, like I always say, pick your battles. You do not have to have a conversation about every single solitary thing that comes out of his mouth or out of her mouth. Because sometimes, boo, they are trying to test you. They are. Number 13, keep your promises. What you say you're going to do, do it. I'm going to be here at this time. Be there. I'm going to buy that gift. Buy the gift. I'm going to take the kids here. Take the kids here. Like, keep your promises. It's not sexy. And you also make the person feel like you're not important. I'm sorry, like they're not important. Enough for you to keep your promise. If you say you're going to do it, do it. Keep your promises, dude. Keep your promises, sis. Don't be a fickle person. Number 14 can be something hard to do, but I think that it is very important for you guys to do in order to keep your relationship cohesive, which is to make sure that you are taking your partner's side or at least be diplomatic, especially when you know that they are in the wrong about something. So I have a quick story about this because uh, this is getting longer than I wanted it to be. Anyway, so when me and... Um, my fiance, we were out and he, basically he was in a situation with this lady and him and I had already talked about how we were going to do it. And, um, I didn't like the way he did something and I'll just keep it vague like that. Right. But I don't like the, I didn't like the way that he did something, but in the presence of that other person, that third party, oh, I was gun ho with my boo. But now when we got to the car, <laughs> that was something different. Like, obviously, I, you know, I, I'm, I don't do all of that yelling and screaming and all that stuff. But I definitely let him know that I was not a fan of the way he handled that situation upstairs. But in, in, in the presence of a third party, oh, it's me and him all day. We on team. We on team. We on the same team. But now, when we got in the car, like, like now, wait a minute. Now, hold up. Now, hold up. I ain't like the way you did this, this, and this, and this. Like, there was no reason for me to hold back on said situation. Again, I'm keeping it vague on purpose, but I'm letting you guys know that you can handle things and you can be diplomatic about being on your partner's side when somebody else is there. Because surely enough, uh, uh, when people see that there is a breakdown in your relationship, they they definitely, they, they latch on to that. They latch on to it and they'll start digging. Digging a hole even wider between you and your mate. And you don't want that. So... All right, moving on to number 15. It actually goes along with number 14, which is just to be supportive of your partner. You want them to know that you are on their team. And this doesn't have to be in one of those situations where you have to be di diplomatic or um, basically let them know that you are still on their side. This can be in any situation. There might be some goal or something that your partner wants to reach. Be supportive. Even if they fail at it, they know that you got their back. All right. So those are my 15 ways on how to build trust in a new relationship and any relationship, honestly. So um, I thank you guys for sticking around for me one more day and I will definitely see you guys tomorrow. Oh, also, don't forget to give me thumbs up and, of course, share this video with any of your friends and family that need to see it. Love you guys. Mwah!